Thank you. All right, Tim, so you're going to have a one-minute opening statement. Then we have three questions, which you'll have one minute each to answer. Then you'll have a one-minute close. Will is the timekeeper in front of you, and you can mm -hmm. begin when you're ready. Sure, sounds good. So my name is Tim St. Clair. I'm a first-generation student. I come from a family that uh, hasn't been doing so well financially, so I have a lot of perspective on a lot of different things. And uh, the reason I'm running for vice president is I have a lot of topics I want to cover, things that usually are overlooked, things that people don't really turn an eye to, because if you don't have the problem, you don't know the problem, you don't see the problem. And some of those things are the achievement gap. Textbook costs are something we all see, but no one really does things about it. I want to fix that. And affordability in college is one of my primary priorities, because let's face it, we all have to pay huge tuition rates that, frankly, are not what we promised. In the 1990s, uh, we had a great time uh, when the state provided for two-thirds. We don't have that anymore, so these are the things I really want to push during my vice presidency and some of the reasons why uh, I'm running. Thank you. All right, question one. Tell us about the best team you have worked on and how did that prepare you to be a member of the cabinet? So I would say the best team I've worked on has been my Senate this year. I was elected president uh, last year for this year that we're currently in. And the Senate that we've had this year has been absolutely phenomenal. And they've been phenomenal on so many different aspects. One of the reasons uh, they're phenomenal is that they're from a very diverse background with different philosophies, different thoughts. And we actually had many meetings where, you know, it's not like a single, we all say I and it's done. It's like, hey, we have to discuss this. We have to get things done. And so I feel it's very important. I'm very blessed to have that experience because the fact of the matter is we have like 350 people in this room. We're not all going to share the same opinions. We're going to have the same goal, cheaper education, more affordable education, better access to education, cheaper textbooks. But we have different ideas of how to get there. And so being able to have that experience of working in an environment with different opinions, different thoughts, I think that really helped me prepare for my role as cabinet right now. All right, question two. Tell us the three goals you hope to accomplish if elected vice president. Oh, that's perfect, because I had three bank goals. And if you were with my meeting grade, uh, you would see them on the table. They were big posters with different colors. So my first goal is textbook affordability. I'm uh, serving on the statewide textbook affordability work group. And we all know that start of the semester, you go to the bookstore and you buy a $300 paperweight. Why? Because someone told you to. What do you do with it? You open it twice. Everyone have that experience? Because I sure did. And the worst part about it is when you go return it, oh, you can't return it because a new edition came out. Guess what? They changed the title. <laughs> so one of my biggest things is really going to give uh, more open educational resources, more digital textbooks, better options for our students to have better accessibility and better you know, uh, affordability with the textbooks. Affordability I talked about before. We used to have two thirds. Now we only have uh, of our uh, two thirds of the state covered our College education, now only one-third. We pay two-thirds. What I call public institutions, the, pay, the state pays for more than half. We don't have that. We pay for more than half. It's a private institution. The last thing is the achievement gap, which I'd like to talk about more by my mouth time. Uh, question three. What do you believe should be MSCSA's top three policy goals over the next year, and how will you work to help achieve them? So I think the top three policy goals are closely aligned with uh, my uh, three things I want to get done next year. So the first thing I want MSCSA to do is just remind our legislators that they made a promise to our students and their constituents, the people they elected, to provide higher education and to support that. If they want a public institution, it needs to be public. The state needs to pay for more than half of that. If it's not paying for more than half, it's a private institution and you're failing your constituents. You're failing the people you're supposed to re represent. I think that's one thing I want, uh, want us to push as policy, is to maintain that message. Uh, another thing I want us to do is take a greater look at the achievement gap. Right now, if you're not white, middle class, male, native born American, you are at 15% less likely chance to succeed in our higher education institutions across the state and across the nation. Why? A lot of reasons why. But, you know, let's put some student perspective in that. Let's get some student voices in that conversation. It actually makes some like, strides towards fixing that problem. And textbooks are also going to be a top one on my list as well. All right. And then a one minute closing statement. Sure. So, you know, if you look at all our candidates, I know the last election was super long because we were in the secretion room and, you know, a lot of time passed by. So it was probably a really tough election. You're going to make tough decisions. And that's what student leaders do. I really want you to vote for me because I have a lot of experience in this organization. I have a lot of passion. I have a lot of drive. And I have the skills, intelligence, motivation, 
and everything I could possibly uh, need to do what uh, the vice president needs to do. I'm prepared to chair the uh, platform committee. I'm prepared to go to legislation. I've already been there 25 times for different meetings uh, with different uh, individual legislators. This year alone, I'm not even vice president. So if I go there, you can probably expect the number to triple. In the end of the day, you have to make a vote. I think you should vote for me because I feel like I'm the best candidate for this position. Deborah Tuck is a great speaker. She's a great person. And she'd probably be pretty damn good as vice president. But, you know, I feel I have somewhat of a lead because I have these things, these uh, items planned out. And uh, I really hope for your support on these issues. So if you support the issues I want to work towards and you trust my confidence, I am probably the person you should vote for. So thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to seeing you later.